Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here for the match preview. I am joined by a familiar face in Jer Brown. He's over in Portugal and he's there for the game. Jer, how are you settling in over there? How's the weather? And how are you? Oh, good, yeah. So I flew in from my new base of Malta to Porto last night. It was great. It was lovely traditional Irish weather. It was absolutely teeming down from the heavens. But um Turned out to be quite a nice night and then moved on from Porto to Aveiro there today. It's about a 45 minute bus journey, um, so it didn't take too long. Uh, yeah, the weather was actually very nice today. It's a lovely, now pleasant, sunny summer's eve. And so, uh, yeah, looking forward to heading in and getting a bit of food and uh, a few drinks after this. And yeah, it's still quite well, obviously goes to the game. It's not till Tuesday. A few Irish around. There was a good crowd out in Porto last night and I've seen plenty more jerseys as well uh, since I got into Aveiro around two or three o'clock this afternoon. Very nice, very nice. It's uh, wet and windy uh, back in Ireland. You swear it was a, a winter day. But anyway, look, we're here to talk about Ireland. Obviously, we're coming into this game for the first time in a while. There's a bit of optimism. We won a game late on. Didn't look like we were going to win the game. And Troy Parr, obviously, getting the winner. Uh, very, very lucky to get the goal as well. Uh, but look, they all count, and that's the main thing. Uh, we're got, how are you feeling going into this game? I know it's Portugal. Look, um, we'll, we'll discuss their squad and their results in a few minutes. But um, are you optimistic Ireland can get anything really out of the game? I, mean, I think at best we'll get a draw, but from your own point of view? Uh, probably not really, to be brutally honest. Like, obviously, it was great to get the win the other night, but you lose it, it was... Still an uninspiring performance. It was a very, very poor game of football to watch. It genuinely looked like none of the players on the pitch really looked too interested in it. Like obviously, like a lot of players playing, they haven't kicked the ball in four or five weeks since the championship season ended. They're in the middle of their summer holidays. Obviously, it would have been a little bit uh, rusty and lack of match fitness. And you could tell by hungry. You know, it's ten days away from the opening Euros games. They probably were just holding back a little bit themselves. So yeah, it's still probably a little bit too hard to be kind of optimistic on it. But as I said, like it's nice um, to be coming in off the back of a win. That other than someone like Gibraltar, or even in general, like a lot of teams have beaten recently, like Gibraltar, Latvia, Malta, they're all basically minnows. So it's kind of the first time we've had beaten a decent nation probably since Scotland two years ago. But like the task ahead of us now is going to be very, very difficult on on Tuesday night again it just kind of depends how Portugal approach this we were just saying they're off camera it's strange this is their third one up game most countries only seem to be going with two now maybe it's because I think they're in like group E or F so they're not probably kicking off until Monday or Tuesday but again it just kind of depends how they approach this game are they going to go very very strong are they kind of going to take it easy with it use a chance to you know give a run out to maybe squad players and stuff like that so I don't, I don't want to say it's entirely dependent on how Portugal approached this game because we would have probably said the same thing back in 2021 and on both occasions in that qualifying campaign we were unlucky um, definitely obviously very unlucky in Faro not to come away with something and then we were full value for the draw in Dublin uh, again Portugal actually had to win to, to qualify like so yeah like it's an end of season friendly yeah you're, you're a little bit more optimistic but I don't think we're getting too carried away as you can great brilliant you know, we have a real chance here. I think we're still being very much keeping our feet on the ground. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were continuing on with something there. Um, yeah, look, I think, but the thing is with this game, you know, it looks like they played some squad players against Croatia. They lost that game. We'll go into the results in a minute. But do you think, based off what you've seen so far, that John O'Shea is deserved of a chance of taking this team on a full-time basis? Like, do you think... There's been signs there. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I know the football maybe in the second half wasn't great, but I, he did come out and kind of say, you know, I blame the fact that it's the time of the year that we're playing in, but they still got the win. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what football's about, is, is getting the win. And I think Irish fans would rather that than kind of just going into games blindly and, you know, hoping that we can play a bit of football and turn teams over and that hasn't worked for us like as much as we wanted it to players are adapting and stuff like that but um for me i was delighted coming away the other day that we actually just got a win like the feeling of getting a win i don't think it really matters how you win at the end of the day i think it's just about winning yeah uh i, I agree with you as well like you know as well the hungry are ranked 26 in the world there are a lot of places both so there is obviously significant in the victory. It's going to we're probably going to move up now in the FIFA World Rankings, regardless of how Tuesday goes on the back of that. 
So there is kind of significance and importance there. To kind of go back to the main point of your question, have I seen enough under Channel Shea? I haven't really, to be brutally honest. I don't think any game so far has been particularly inspiring. The Belgian game was a decent performance, but Belgium looked so, so disinterested that night. Swiss game, I think, was a reality check, uh, kind of like still how far away we were. Now, look, the Swiss are a good side. We still only lost that game 1 0, but I know, just like squad announcements haven't particularly been inspiring. Like, you see, Ender Stevens is in the squad. You're kind of like, why? Like, he's at the tail end of his career. Bring him back, Robbie Brady. Oh, be it Brady can turn around and say he was probably one of our best players against Belgium, but you know, these players, like, they're kind of players you'd be looking to kind of move on. I just, even in game management, his substitution's been really kind of poor. Like, not starting Jacob Bryan was ridiculous to the night for Shane Duffy, who definitely proved with his 45 minutes he is done in international football. Like, Jacob Bryan come off the back for a brilliant season with Leon. Other than Sammy Smollox, has probably been the best Irish player this season for their club in terms of their club performances. Like it just, you're kind of thinking like, this is your opportunity for you to kind of like express yourself, make bold statements, go and establish your own identity and your own DNA over this team. And I just feel like it's still Stephen Kenny kind of fingerprints or that kind of legacy. Um, but like we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, like because just say if John O'Shea gets a result on Tuesday night, he can turn around and say, well, I've only lost one of my four games in charge, all against teams at the Euros. I'm building something. I familiarity with the players going into that England game, which is crucial. Where then if we turn around and get a new manager, it kind of feels like all oh, that momentum is kind of going to be swept away and like starting all over again. Like unless obviously they include John O'Shea in the backroom team. Like that kind of would be nearly what I would like. I like John O'Shea. Like he's you know well well liked by the fans. He's a very good player. And same as you like I just in the day like I just want the yard to do well. So obviously it's delight for the window and I still obviously want us to get a win on Tuesday, but I still haven't been unfortunately convinced that O'Shea has done enough for me, but because the FEI have made an absolute balls of this managerial situation, like they had four months before the March window to get managers they couldn't do it. They kind of nearly feel like, especially if we get results on Tuesday, they kind of nearly have no option but to kind of nearly give it to John O'Shea. Yeah, well, I just think, you know, with that, I think at the end of the day, he did come in and say, look, I just want to get Ireland winning matches again. And he has done that, in fairness to him. And look, the, the Belgium game, I don't really look too much into that, the one in March, because, you know, it was, it was like their C team, to be honest. There was like a couple of good yeah. players on the pitch that wasn't like... C or B team, whatever way you want to look at it. Uh, there wasn't um, their, their top class regular players in there, which they have the De Bruyne, the Lukaku's, and so on. They did have Doku playing, I appreciate that, but Seamus Coleman did have him in his pocket for large parts of the game. Um, but I do think that if we look at that and then we look at the Swiss game, you know, the, the players were in season and they were fit for that. But I do think, um, I, I think it's almost kind of harsh in a sense to just. Uh, look at the game the other night purely down to a fitness point of view it's just that the time of the season that we're on I don't understand why these fixtures are played at this time let the players have their off season and let them come back fresh I understand it from an international point of view you can kind of make it like a club atmosphere for two weeks or whatever um, and work on things maybe but it's pointless as you say unless you're going to give O'Shea the job to actually let him go and do that and let him do the job you know in that scenario yeah, like you know, just even think yourself, like it is, it is very, very difficult. Like you can tell, obviously, by a lot of the players. Like it's, it's kind of no surprise when you look at who was probably our best player choose tonight. Will Smallbone, why? Because he just finished playing club football a week before that. He got the extended run with Sahan in the playoffs. Like Troy Powers obviously looked pretty alive when he came on again. Another player just coming off the back of the season, Adam Eda, or the likes of you know Sammy Smallox, you know Josh Cole and these type of players who just looked a bit off and it's the first time to kick a ball in a couple of weeks. I do agree with you. Like, it's, in general, even from a fan's point of view, well, it's great and it's lovely. It's been brilliant. I've come over from this game making a little bit of a summer holiday of it. But you're kind of, kind of the same as you. Like, do Ireland really need to play in this window? Like, we're not going to the Euros. Can the teams who are in the Euros, can they just play the warm up games against each other? Like, instead of dragging us out to play this game, like Northern Ireland going to Spain last night, Wales going to Faro to play Gibraltar. It is kind of very, very tough and hard to motivate. And like I said, like a lot of these players haven't played since the first week of May. They've been in off season most since then. Then they have to try and switch back in and get ready. And then they know they're going back on their summer holidays again for another three or four weeks before pre season rolls around. So it is it is very, very difficult. The only thing is like there's a week between the two games that John O'Shea probably has a chance to turn around the players like, look, have a bit enough, 
off time, down time after the game. Get back in, as you said, like it's the longest the Ireland squad have probably been together probably since probably since the Greece game last year because they've done the Turkey camp and stuff like that. So you can try and create some balls and some atmosphere around it, but yeah, it is like very, very difficult from, from our perspective compared to Hungary or not Hungary. Well, yeah, obviously Hungary because they're going to Euros and Portugal because they know that there's something at the end of this. Like they're going off to Germany a couple of weeks for, for us. Like, oh yeah, we're just filling in gaps to help other teams prepare for something that we're not going to be there at ourselves. Yeah, it's frustrating. But look, we'll, we'll get into Portugal yeah. and we'll look at them, you know, just looking at their last, I suppose, uh, eight, eight, was eight games. Um I mean, they lost against Portugal last night. Or sorry, they lost against Croatia. Croatia sorry, yeah. um, they are Portugal. Uh, but like going from I suppose October to to now, I mean, they they beat Slovakia three two. They beat Bosnia five nil. They beat Liechtenstein two nil. Um, they beat Iceland two nil. And the nineteenth of November, and then coming into the games in twenty twenty four. They uh, beat Portugal. Uh, they beat Sweden five two. They lost to Slovenia two nil, and then um, they beat Portugal four two five days ago. And then last night they lost two one to oh, Finland. You mean? What did I say? You said Portugal again. Ah. <laughs> Get on yourself. Good. I'm only I'm only awake from my nap, so apologies about that. Yeah, look, uh, they they beat Finland four two, and they lost to Croatia. Last night, uh, 2-1. And look, at, I suppose when we look at their squad, we know, you know, even their forwards, like we would kill to have any of these, uh, really. Um, Ronaldo, Gonzalo Ramos, João Felix, Rafael Leao, Diogo Jota, and then Francis Conce. So not so sure we'd kill for Conce. So, but maybe I'll be eating my words after the uh, the Euros on that one. Then we have uh, in midfield, they've got Pedro Neto, who's kind of like a forward as well. Vitinha, a very good player. Ruben Neves, Mat- Mateus Nunes, Man City, Joao Neves, who seems to be a rising star at Benfica, and everybody's talking about him. And uh, he seems to think he's going to have a breakout Euros and probably going to get a big move off the back of it. Uh, a lot of people in Benfica are, are, are high on hopes. Uh, on him, I actually have contacts in Benfica, so I know that much. Uh, they got Danilo, uh, Bernardo Silva, Br- Bruno Fernandes, and Joe Polina, who is now in talks with uh, Bayern Munich as well. And then their defence. I mean, you've got Pepe, who's 41, uh, but like you've got Ruben Diaz, you've got Diogo, uh, Diogo Dallo, who had a good season at Manchester United, uh, jo- Joao Cancelo, uh, and Antonio Silva. Nuno Mendes, uh, Ruben Diaz, if I haven't said him already, and then Nelson Semedo, and in goals they have uh, Jose Sa, the Wolves keeper, Diogo Costa, and then Rui Patricio, who obviously used to be at Wolves as well. I think Jose Sa is a very good goalkeeper, by the way. Um, so that's their squad. Obviously, Roberto Martinez is their manager. Um, yeah, I think look, even if they put out B team, they're, they're still going to have a very good side. So, what are, what are your thoughts, kind of, on their results and? I still think um, looking at the result against Croatia and, and uh, I actually can get their team that played in that game for you. Um, so they went with Costa in goal, Mendes left back, Inacio uh, and Diaz in centre half, Dallo right back, Pelinha, Vitinha, Bruno Fernandes in midfield, Bernardo Silva captain in the side, uh, Ramos and Felix. They all started the game. A good few of them were subbed off. So it looks as though like he is trying to give players minutes and sharpness as the tournament com- comes along. So are you expecting to see a strong enough squad coming into this Portugal game just based off the fact that this is going to be their last game before they go into the actual Euros? Yeah, I think they'll probably go fairly strong enough. Maybe there's a, a couple of players are on the fringes and they're having one or two doubts about they yeah, don't start in birth. I think they'll kind of play it, but I think they'll definitely try and give as, as much minutes into the likes of, say, someone in particular like Diego Jota, who didn't play a lot of football towards the end of the season with injuries. And he's obviously, as we, as we well know, his time in Liverpool, when he's on the pitch, by God, can he score goals? And he's, you know, in good goal scoring form at the moment. So I expect, like, them to be kind of fairly strong that way. I, I, I fancy them to have a very, very good Euros. I was just looking, I know there's a lot of complications to how the knockouts work, but they top their group. Which I think their group is Turkey, Czech Republic, and Georgia. So they should top that group come to me. But say they top their group and all other results go according to plan, say as in England and France top their groups, they're avoiding them until the final. They're looking at, I think, potentially Spain, Italy, or Germany in the semi year course along the way. But I think they have a really, really good team. I think, to be honest, they're probably a better team 
then when we played them that time in qualifying for the 2022 World Cup, they certainly seemed to have a better kind of chemistry. Um, obviously, what they're going to do with Ronaldo, that's definitely going to cause a lot of kind of debate and talking points throughout the course of the Euros. I think if I was Roberto Martins, I'd be trying to sell Ronaldo. Look, you're 37 now. It's unlikely you're going to be able to play 90 minutes, but you're still a goal machine. If he's willing to buy in and come off the bench of an impact player, you know, they have a dangerous prospect there. That's probably their one downfall is um, is their manager, Roberto Martinez. As you well know from being an Everton fan, I don't particularly rate him that highly. I know he won the Cup with Wigan, but got relegated the same season. He started off well at Everton and then that really faded out and he failed with the Belgium's own generation. So he's one of the managers that seems to get a better job as he goes along, despite the fact he seems to fail more and more. But Look, they're a dangerous team, as you said. I think regardless of what 11 they put out on Tuesday night, it's going to be still a major ask to expect Aaron to get something because it is stacked with top-class quality players. Yeah, I, I I would agree with all of that, to be honest with you. Um, look, look, we know Portugal are a good side. We, we come up and we, we obviously still have the nightmares of Ronaldo popping up with those two late goals. Um, in what would have been a, 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 you know one of Ireland's best ever wins and obviously that was under Stephen Kenny and we crumbled in the last couple of minutes Ronaldo's just a joke to be honest with you and uh, I think Ronaldo at this stage though look he's playing out in Saudi Arabia he's losing finals and stuff like that he is on the he is on the decline and look that's natural with, with age it's going to happen as a top level athlete but I think it's I think it's mad like when you look at Pepe 41 and then Ronaldo as well you know 39 or whatever he is now um for them to still like roberto Mar- martinez spoke about like them and how i saw it on rio ferdinand's uh, podcast that like what a great role well, well both of them they're great great role models setting for the squad like the age of them the professionalism of them rubbing off on the next generation of Portuguese players. And I think that's vital for, for Portugal um, going forward. Like To have someone like Ronaldo to lean on, who's, who's seen and done it, one of the best ever to play the game. And then you've got Pepe, who, you know, you look at his trophy cabinet, it's pretty big. And he's yeah. kind of seen and done it too. A lot, I think a lot of people underrate Pepe in that respect as well, and his quality and his leadership uh, in that Portugal side. So I think... I don't doubt that this Portugal side are, are going to come and, and give it to Ireland. The thing is, is that when you look at their bench compared to ours, they can bring on strength and depth. The only thing I will say about our team is for the first time in a long time, we have strikers in form and that helped. You yeah. saw when Troy Parrott came on, he just looked a level above. And I think you, you, to your point about Will Smallbone being fit and, and looking like the best player because he could have a continuation. I think the same thing speaks for Troy, maybe Adam Eda as well. Um, but players like Doherty and stuff like that, I know he made that little, you know, joke and comment saying 45 of my best, but he was dead on his feet. You know, he got taken off and so on. But I think the players that are in form up front, the likes of Sam, well, I think even Sammy Smollix was blown at uh, at certain points the other night. He was, yeah, definitely. He wasn't when he saw the goal in sight with Troy, though, to be fair. Like, he did keep up with him. Uh, probably got a little bit uh, ahead of himself. But, like, the fact is, you've got Adam Eda, obviously scored the goal, yeah? Great header, great ball in by Will Smallbone. But then you've got someone like Troy who comes on and wins it. And that's the second game now in, um, well, that Troy has, has won with a last kind of gasp goal. He said, I hope he continues to keep making a, uh, a habit of that. And, look... This could be the making of a Troy Parrott or something like that. Do you know what I mean? If if he can maybe score again um, in, in this game and carry a little bit of momentum into next season. I know he's going to go away and have a break now, but like you'd want someone like Troy now to, you know, goals to start coming his way. And um, he seems to be putting in a lot of graft and stuff like that. And I'm hoping that it's going to continue to pay off for him. And then you've got Adam Eady, you've got Sammy Smodox, who I'm sure wants to get his first international goal. You've got Michael Abafemi, who looked a little bit sharp when I thought I thought when he came on the other night now. So he might be pushing to try and get on. You've got Tom Cannon there as well. So there's all these players that are capable of scoring goals. And if you go back to when we've been doing videos over the years and we've been, you know, struggling to find players who are scoring goals. Like I know Scott Hogan would have been scoring goals for Birmingham and stuff like that, but never really done it for Ireland whenever he was called up. Um, he seemed to be like the only striker that was in a bit of form. And then we were relying on players coming in, not in form. But a lot, like I would say all of our strikers are in form, maybe except for Obafemi. But every one of them, every every other one of them is coming into it. 
in form and I think that's the difference we, we look like we're, we're going to score goals now whereas before we just look like we were aimlessly getting the ball up um, but we do need to change a couple of things I think on the wide uh, positions I think changes need to be had I think he needs, she needs to start the game with, the, with uh, a lot of the players that finish the game you know, I think Jake needs to come in and, and start I probably think Scales needs to come in and start um, as well and then you're probably looking at left wing back. Does Robbie Brady go there? Does Ender Stevens go there? Or, or does someone else go in there? So there's, there's loads of different things. Does he go with a different formation and accommodate Mikey Johnston? What way does he do it? Mikey Johnston would know Portugal a little bit from playing over there as well, you know? Yeah, like it's it's interesting. Like even, I know it might sound a bit strange, but it wasn't the hardest chance. But you take either goal or night, like, would you confidently say pre Celtic move, either scores that? He probably doesn't, but. I do think the fact is whether he's gone Celtic, he's got confidence, got the goals, he puts it away, and you're seeing the reward for it now, hopefully. Kicking on, like, obviously, for his sake, you hope now that he makes that permanently. And I think as well, as I agree with you, I would try power. I think that move to Holland has helped him. And you're kind of hoping now that he gets a permanent move this summer because I don't think he's ever really going to get the chance to top number. He's probably been probably not good enough to, for the Premier League but you just hope that he can kind of maybe finally get a permanent move somewhere so he knows exactly right this is exactly where I'm setting down that maybe goes back to the Dutch League the Belgian League somewhere I don't know Portuguese League you know somewhere like that kind of standard that's still a fairly decent standard I get that kind of um, exposure like look what going to Leon has done for Jacob O'Brien would be interested to see what's going to happen to him for the summer as well Like so there will be there's some parts like that as well like even mentioned with Sammy Smallox is he going to go to the Premier League is he going to go to Galatasaray is rumoured or high-end championship club like so there's a couple of interesting things like that as well uh, that will obviously need to be um, that will obviously develop over the course of summer as imagine the way he's going to set up I'd imagine it's probably going to be fairly conservative because as we alluded to we know the attacking quality that uh, that Portugal have as well just even one thing on that I meant to say as well just on Pepe I've only seen him once this season but that was for Porto against Arsenal in the Champions League. He didn't play like a 41-year-old that night. He played like a, at least a 31-year-old. And I know from a Portuguese guy I work with who's a big Porto fan, he said he'd arguably been their, been their best player in the season. So he's just an absolute machine. How he's still going strong at 41 years of age. Yeah, I think that, you know, he's, he's setting the standard for the rest of the players. And I wish we had someone like that in our squad. Um, but it Shame is nice. Well, yeah, to an extent, but um, sure. the problem is he is kind of winding down a little bit. Um, uh, you know, the fact that he keeps on just taking one year roles at Everton, it kind of tells me that yeah. he's kind of looking at, you know, finishing up soon enough. And he's, he's basically said that as well. But he is going to be playing for one more year. I would start him and make him captain for the Portuguese game. Why not give him another game? We need the leadership out there. I mean, if you take Coleman out of that side, it's, it is a largely young side. You know, Darrow Shea is probably one of the. Um, contenders probably to be a captain if if Coleman steps out. I think that either Cullen or O'Shea would be the um the people who captain the team there. If he doesn't go with Duffy mm-hmm. or or whoever, you know. So I think um Dar O'Shea for me is is going to be vital for us in years to come. I think he's going to be one of the main players. Obviously, we know Omar Bamadeli and Nathan Collins aren't in the squad. They've been big for us as well. But uh, the, the the luxury is we've been quite lucky in centre half positions that we've got good players there we've got Jake now to come in if he starts that game that could be a, a huge um, propeller to kind of see if he can go forward as a natural centre back and someone who just slots in at the centre of defence there and then you've got Scales who kind of completes the balance for me you've got a left footed player playing alongside him and uh, you might even see Scales move into a left wing back position you never know if uh, if he doesn't go at Robbie Brady so there's an option there as well so you can bring in another defender there and Jake or sorry Dara can go on to the left centre back position there but I don't think you should be putting Seamus Coleman as the right centre back I think it just it didn't really look very balanced when he went there the other night and when he went to um, right wing back uh, he was far better and I think the team just looked far better in a um, balance kind of you know shape uh, because when we were on the ball you could see every time we got Seamus for Coleman got the ball he just didn't know where to go because a lot of players just weren't shown for it and just Doherty unfortunately just looked he just looked off he just wasn't fit which is fair enough but um, yeah I think if we're looking at it going in, going into the game I'm, I'm I want to be optimistic as players are in form but I don't see us winning the game 
Um, and that's just because of the quality that Portugal have. And I, I, I just don't think we should show them too much respect. I think we should try, obviously, yeah. um, get some sort of a result. Because if you think about it, if, if if we get a result there, I think you have to go, okay, a win and a draw against Hungary and Portugal. Without getting hasty, I think you probably have to look at that and go, give John O'Shea the job if he's managed the results. So that's out of four games, that would be one loss, um two draws um, and one win so it's not a bad record against size in the Euros but again these are kind of all yeah. warm up sort of games so they don't really mean it but I, I do agree with your sentiment in terms of keeping the team together for the sake of you know the England game and stuff like that and the continuity I, I don't see a point in bringing in someone unless, unless O'Shea as you say is going to be the man is that Robbie Keane who comes in as the manager I don't know um, but I would be looking at this going, John O'Shea wants the job on a full-time basis. Uh, he's come out and he said he's wanted it. And if we can get a result against Portugal, he will have earned it in my eyes. I don't know about you. Yeah, I think the Robbie Keane one would be very, very interesting in terms of the reaction. That would go, how that would go down, obviously, everything with him going over to Israel and stuff like that. But look, we're not going to go open up that kind of worms. If it happens, it happens. We'll talk about the time. But yeah, that's why I'm kind of taking the same. Like, I'm not kind of convinced by O'Shea, but I just... Like the England game is just massive. Like if we are to have, we probably about a two percent chance of getting results for Risky speaking against England. But we've any hope again, any in that game. We just kind of feel we need someone who's knows the players and familiarity instead of just bringing someone completely in for the cold. Like say someone like, for instance, like Willie Sagnall, who's still been named, still been linked to the job. Like he, he doesn't know anything about Irish football. He's foreigner and all that kind of way. Like you need someone who has a bit of an idea to set up. Like include O'Shea there. So like you feel like the groundwork that he has done. With these kind of results, why you can't read too much into the standard of the games, but it's still going to create some bit of buzz and some bit of a mental look. Look, the England game will take care of itself in terms of a buzz and atmosphere and getting the players kind of going for. But it would help you for coming into the back of coming into off the back for a couple of good results during the summer, that kind of way as well. I know it's hard to keep momentum going in international football because it's broken up every so often. But you still imagine players becoming into that camp in September in a better frame of mind than if. We turn around and get tonked six or seven in on Tuesday night. I don't think that'll happen. I think it'll probably be, as you said, like at the moment, you're kind of thinking like, oh, okay, we're not going to have much of an attacking threat, but oh, I could see us maybe getting the goal that kind of way because we have strikers in form. And so, yeah, I think probably be something like two, three, one Portugal. Obviously, you're hoping maybe it could be much tighter than that, but I think that'll probably be a fair synopsis of probably how I could see the game going on Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to see us getting a result, but if we do, it would be brilliant, and it would gather uh, a bit of momentum going into the games, yeah. um, in September, and that's what we we kind of want something like that. So whether it's a draw or a win, uh, but hopefully not a loss, um, but yeah, look, it's been a, it's been a long, grueling season for a lot of players, and I think they will all welcome the break when it happens. Um, yeah, so as I think you gave your score prediction there, did you? I did. Yeah, I'm going to say. 3-1 Portugal. Usually when I back against Ireland, we usually get good results. So hopefully that might uh, follow suit again on Tuesday night. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go for one one, and I think okay. I think we might take the lead and then uh, concede. And I think we'll concede close to scoring because we love to do that. Um, that is true. Yeah. Same same the night as well. Where we had the lead for what five minutes when we first scored. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I think I think the yeah. same thing will happen there. Uh, but I would like to see. I, I actually think what I think will happen is Jacob Bryan will get his first uh, goal for Ireland a header from a corner or a free kick. You know, it's very similar uh, parallels with the, with your pattern here to the game in, in Farrow in terms of the score line, how it's going to go, defender score from a set piece and all that. Hopefully, it won't have the same conclusion with. Ronaldo scored two late goals. Although we were, I remember we done the watch along that night. We were fairly heartbroken. I don't think we'd be too heartbroken if we end up losing a, a friendly game in a, in a similar manner to that qualifier game, which pretty much killed off any hopes of making Qatar for that World Cup. Yeah, uh, look, I, I, I look, I, I don't care what uh, what really happens tomorrow. But I would like to see just a you know a real Irish performance yeah. of you know going there, try and get a result, leave it all on the line and uh, give it your best really I know it might be a defeatist attitude but like look and at the same time it's great to see an Irish man in charge of Ireland who who gets it who 
loves Irish football, who wants to see Irish football get back to what it was. A man who's been seen, or been there and done it with the Irish team. He's helped us. He's came up in big games. And uh, he seems to inspire this group. So I'd be hoping that he can inspire uh, a result and show why he should be the Ireland manager come uh, September, come at the end of the, the break. Because I imagine if we get a win tomorrow, I wouldn't say they'd be long from without you know announcing he is the new manager. Yeah, whereas I think if we don't get a win tomorrow, get badly beaten, the saga is probably going to drag on for another yeah. four or five weeks throughout the interview. We're, just, we're all sick of it now at the stage. Like. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, hopefully it gets resolved after this game. But we'll know a bit more after this game, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's, the way, yeah. that's the way we're going to have to have to look at it. But we'll leave it there. Um, that's been a pretty good preview there. We've got half an hour there for people to tune in and uh, give a listen and give their thoughts and uh, let us know for anything that we discussed in the uh, the whole show discuss it in the comments whether you're a Portugal fan or whether you're an Ireland fan or whether you're going to the game or anything like this uh, you might be listening to this over there getting yourself in the mood for the game on Tuesday um, but yeah uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video huge thanks to Jer for joining us in Portugal and uh, we will uh, speak to you soon Jer I'll leave you with the last word I think uh, it's all pretty much said and done. I look forward now to getting some food. I haven't eaten in nearly eight hours, so I'm absolutely starving. So I'm looking forward to getting a bit of food and hopefully soaking up a little bit more of a, have an atmosphere ahead of the game on, on Tuesday. Obviously, still a few nights away. But yeah, just looking forward to even getting around the Aero and seeing what's around the city tomorrow, even from just walking from the, the bus station to my accommodation. It's about 25 minute walk. Comes across in a very nice city. So I look forward to getting around and seeing it tomorrow and maybe also linking up with our, our old colleague as well Gary Spade he's getting in tomorrow as well so it'll be good to see Gary I haven't seen him since October so uh, those good football debates when you're in the company of Gary Spade 100% well listen you go and enjoy yourself uh, enjoy the sun and enjoy the game of course hopefully we're coming out of this with uh, with a victory or some sort of positive result um, yeah. so yeah you and enjoy and Gary as well uh, guys if you're watching don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe and we'll uh, speak to you all soon. Leave your thoughts in the comments on it we discussed. Take care.